If you want to set up a BiPAP mode for your patient in exacerbation of COPD or CHF, it's very easy to set up, but you're going to have to do a couple of extra settings in addition to what you normally set up for CPAP. First thing, your default setting is going to be AC. So let's change that to CPAP just so we can get started getting the rest of our settings completed. We're going to have a PEEP default of 5, and we're going to leave that there to start. The next thing we're going to want to do is push the button next to the PIP and hold it down so that we get the window that pops up with pressure support. The recommendation is going to be to start at about 10 and then accept that setting. Now we've got 10 over 5. Our inspiratory pressure is going to be 10 centimeters of water and the patient's going to breathe out against 5. That's where we're going to want to start and see how they do with this. We're watching for good chest rise, adequate chest rise, but not so much that we are at risk for barotrauma. Next thing we can change is the FiO2. and We can change that up to 60. And this is just going to be titrated either direction uh, to make sure that our SpO2 on our patient is somewhere between 94 and 99. Now, if your patient's doing well with this, leave these settings. It should be fine. Notice I've got an apnea alarm because I don't have it hooked up to somebody right now. But that's a good reminder that the apnea alarm tells you that your patient's not breathing at least 12 times a minute and you're probably going to have to be more aggressive and start ventilations with a BVM and probably proceed to intubation. Or it could be as simple as just encouraging them to keep breathing on their own. Remember that you can only apply BiPAP to a patient that's conscious, alert, able to follow commands, and able to trigger their own breath. So if you want to change any of these settings, uh, you want to give them a little bit more. We don't want to go too high. We never want to really go to a pressure support above 25, but you can titrate these pressure support numbers up towards 12, uh, 15, possibly 20, if you feel like this is going to be beneficial to the patient. I just caution you to remember that whenever you think of pressure support, you've got to add that to whatever your PEEP setting is, and you add those together, and that's the pressure that is going into your patient's pulmonary system. So just be very mindful of that so that you don't increase endothoracic pressure and cause their blood pressure to drop due to that increased endothoracic pressure. Other than that, there shouldn't be a whole lot of other uh, settings that you need to worry about. You can adjust your FiO2. You're going to see the, the resulting breath per minute that your patient's taking. You got your PEEP setting. You can also adjust that down to uh, three or four or maybe move it up to about six or seven. I caution anyone to go to a PEEP higher than 10. We know we can set a PEEP of 10 because we use CPAP with PEEPs of 10. But remember, when you're using pressure support, you're adding that pressure on top of your PEEP. So that's basically all you need to know to set up BiPAP mode.